What's going on engineers? Welcome to the beginning of the highly requested Node.js basic series. This is part one in the series and it's just going to be a series introduction. One important thing to keep in mind about this series is it's not a JavaScript basic series. Having said that, I am going to try to close the gap between the dated browser JavaScript and Node version 8 that we'll be using for the remainder of the series. In fact, the very first video after the introduction is going to be new useful syntax for ECMAScript 2017 and beyond. So in that video, it's probably going to be on the longer side, I'm going to cover a lot of the high points you know, of the differences between browser JavaScript and ECMAScript 2017. Because ECMAScript 2017 can be used in newer browsers, that's probably going to be the only video that's not 100% specific to Node.js. So the core takeaway there is that you should have some JavaScript experience before you watch this series. If you're a beginner in JavaScript and you have no clue about JavaScript at all, this is probably not your series. You're going to want to find a JavaScript basic series. At the time of this recording, I don't have a JavaScript basic series on my channel. However, depending on when you watch it, it's possible that I have one now. So go ahead and check. So first, what is Node.js for people who are JavaScript programmers but have no clue what Node.js is? Basically, Node.js is JavaScript from the browser minus all the document object model APIs, but add a bunch of other APIs for doing things like file IO and network and a bunch of stuff that you can't do in the browser. And then add way better syntax and features because it's easier to upgrade Node.js than it is JavaScript in the browser. So because of all these new APIs giving JavaScript new capabilities that it never had, it's suitable to be used as a server-side language. Node.js really just unlocks the full potential of JavaScript. So finally, let's review the outline for the series. So I've broken up the series into four sections. ECMAScript 2017 and beyond, core concepts of Node.js, some important standard modules that come built into Node.js, and then some important community modules. So first we're going to go over all the new useful syntax in ECMAScript 2017. Really it's the new stuff from ECMAScript 2015, but there's also been some additions in 2016 and 2017. These are things like block scoping, expression bodies, the spread operator, maps, classes, generators, you know, stuff that's all new from browser JavaScript. There won't be an exhaustive explanation of everything that's new, but I will cover some of the common things that you'll use you know, immediately. Next is going to be installing and running Node.js, so I'll talk about how to install Node.js and then the different ways you can run programs both at the command line as well as the interactive interpreter. We'll talk about functional programming, which is important for people who come from a more procedural programming and may have some mental block about you know, functional type programming. We'll talk about the event loop, which is a really, really important concept in Node.js and it's how Node.js achieves concurrency. We'll talk about promises as a way to reason about async programming, and then we'll talk about await and async, which is almost a replacement for promises, but is normally used alongside of it. We're then going to look at a total of six standard modules that come with Node.js, and these six modules are where Node.js derives a great deal of its power. We'll talk about child processes, which is how Node.js interacts with the underlying system. We'll talk about the cryptography facilities that are built into Node.js. We'll talk about how to do various file input output operations. We'll talk about how to deal with HTTP connections and create basic web servers. We'll talk about Node.js modules system. And finally, we'll talk about lower level TCP networking. We're also gonna cover five important community modules or five that I think are important. And the difference between community modules and standard modules is that when you download Node.js, you get all the standard modules right off the bat. The community modules you have to install with a package manager like NPM. First we'll talk about Bluebird, which is a kind of a library that, that can replace native promises. We'll talk about Express, which is the most popular way of, of getting a web server running in Node.js. Talk about Forever, which is a library which allows you to keep a node process running and restart as you're developing and it does a couple other cool things too. We'll talk about Request, which is a popular library for making HTTP calls. And we'll talk about Moment, which handles things like time and time zones very, very well. And that's the outline for the video. Keep in mind that everything I've listed here is subject to change just because I'm creating the series introduction before I'm actually creating the series. So if I think of something I should have done or I do something else in response to some feedback, then I may add that in here. And that's the series introduction for the Node.js basic series. So click to the next video and get ready to learn a ton of stuff. See you on the next video.